Hi and good day. Um, today I would like to talk a little bit about necromancy. Um, necromancy is the art of uh, working with the deceased. So this can be uh, human deceased but also uh, animals or plants which have uh, yeah no longer have life force. And even though the life force if yeah disappeared and the body has become just matter, um, the spirit of something which has lived uh, is kind of different from all other types of spirit. And hence necromancy is a little bit different from uh, just working with spirits. <clears throat> uh, the art of necromancy is one which occurs in pretty much every religious system. Because every religious system has a way of helping those who have passed on to move on. Uh, for instance, in the Christian tradition you have the eulogy, where you try to gather together a lot of people who have a connection with the deceased, and by focusing a lot of attention and power on the higher parts of the deceased, so his positive traits, his more divine side, this side is amplified, it is fed, it is made stronger, and therefore, and therefore the spirit is uplifted, like pulled upwards by this higher energy, which is part of himself or herself, um, yeah, pulling them to a higher reality. In, for instance, the uh, Chinese tradition, um, they do it quite on the, in, in the opposite manner, and the Aboriginals as well. Um, they don't speak his name or her name, and they cover all pictures, so that you don't entice the spirit to yeah, be pulled back into, into the earth, so it can move on in peace and it can release all earthly ties. And every religion and culture has its own system of helping the dead move on to the next phase. Unfortunately, uh, the amount of wandering dead is ever increasing in Western society. Uh, there are various reasons for, uh, for this occurrence. Um, I will just go over them one by one. One of them is that um, the quality of our uh, burial rites. Uh, there's basically three ways of, uh, of transformation after the death uh, has occurred. Uh, one of them is to be eaten. This is actually the most natural way. And all the energies and powers which were inherent in the body or are still connected to the body they get absorbed by the animals and plants feeding off the body and those energies are then uh, in a way appropriated by the, the being eating it and uh, therefore control of the energy is yeah, transferred from the original inhabitant of the body to the one who has taken the body as food. Uh, so this is yeah, in a way a way to yeah, release all the powers you have responsibility for, the body of responsibility for, to the new owners of those of that body and of the energy. It also goes for the food we eat every day, by the way. Um, the other method is uh, cremation. In cremation, we actually um, use fire to transmute the energies of the body. So it's also a very different thing. Also, when you're cooking. If you use fire or if you use heat. Um, so heat uh, of course creates a kind of a chemical process. And, uh, but fire is a, a transformational process. So one substance becomes another substance and it is this transmutation which happens on a physical level um, which also um, creates a transmutation on an energetical level. So the energies which yeah, were in the spirit or in the energy body are also transformed, they are changed and they are more, made more high, more ethereal. The lower parts of the energy body actually are destroyed or dissolved by the cremation process. So in a way a cremation process is on the one hand uh, a negative thing because all the powers and talents are yeah, annihilated or transformed, they're of no use to anybody anymore. The spirit itself can't use it, uh, but also no other animals or spirits can use it anymore. Um, 
And this can be a little bit shocking or frustrating if the person who died is still very attached to the body or wanted to use the powers inherent in the body for some other purposes. Um, the other thing is it's very quick and it is quite safe. So that's the story about cremation. The last thing which we tend to do with our bodies is to try to preserve them by burying them. And it has as an advantage that the spirit has a lot of opportunity. It can yeah, absorb uh, or release the energies at its own pace. It can use them or just let them disappear in a natural degradation process. Um, so it is yeah, very much more attuned to the personal wishes of the deceased. So that's, those are the advantages. Uh, the disadvantage is that uh, because the energy is not transformed, and if the person doesn't know where he or she is going after death, uh, they're not uh, forced to release their connection with the energy body, which does happen if a person is eaten or burned. Uh, another risk is that the energy, which um, yeah, still remains after death, um, is appropriated by other beings. Um, these can be other spirits, but also other persons who yeah, know the necromantic arts. So if you do decide to conserve a body and preserve it, um, then yeah, it's in a way a source of power and the source of power attracts parasites. So burial places should be quite well defended, quite well cared for. And this is what's not going very well, at least in Western Europe over the past century. Um, it used to be that um, there, are, there are places in nature where the veil is more thin, where spirits can easily pass from one realm to the other. And um, if an animal dies or a person dies in nature, this is what the spirit would do. It would just go with the flow of other things which died, find a thin place in the veil and progress. And the old burial places, they were also built on places where the veil is thin, so that if a person gets buried there and they decide, like, okay, I've had enough of this physical world, I want to move on into a higher world, they could easily do that from the place where they were buried. Um, modern burial places, they're yeah, built without consulting a geomancer, without the use of intuition or guidance of which would be the best place where the veil is thin. And um, yeah, often in these places, it is very hard for the spirit to move on and sometimes almost impossible, which lends to yeah, a lot of spirits collecting in a burial place or haunting the neighborhood. Um, another problem is the uh, maintenance of such a place. And this comes in two sides. Um, one of them is the, the guidance the spirit receives and the other is the protection the deceased receives. Um, in the natural world, there are just uh, spirits who yeah, guide other spirits on. And also, uh, if an animal dies, it just follows the other animals. So it follows other beings of its kind. It uses its instinct to move on to a next incarnation. Uh, humans, however, are, well, uh, let's say very ignorant or very closed off to this um, yeah, uh, instinctive knowledge they have about death and about passing on. So often they find themselves in a state of a lot of confusion. Um, this is specifically true for people who die without having followed the spiritual path or without having a greater awareness of the energetic world beyond. Um, if a person is part of um, yeah, uh, a spiritual path, they, there's a motion, there's a movement to their spirit. And whether they have a body or not, the spirit will keep on moving in the same way, in the same direction. So it will end up where it is already going. So if I'm a Christian and I think a lot about going to heaven, I will continue my journey to heaven with or without a body. And uh, it's the same for every religion uh, which has an image of an afterlife. The spirit will just move on and move into the next phase. But we currently have a lot of people who are in confusion about um, yeah, what to do, where to go, how to go there. And in their life they might think they're going towards the afterlife or progressing spiritually, but they're not, they're in illusion. 
and these spirits tend to end up quite lost after death. And um, especially because so many people die in ignorance these days, uh, there's a lot of need for guidance and the burial place needs to be uh, blessed. And blessed is literally receiving guidance, so there should be guiding powers there. Um, in the Christian tradition, the Catholic Christ Christian tradition, this used to be done by processions. So um, the community would gather, and they would place um, yeah, statues of uh, certain saints, um, or a cross, or the relics, the remains of a, of a, uh, of a, a holy man or woman, and by, in a way, um, lending their prayers, their power, their attention um, to, this, uh, to this saint or to this higher power, the higher power has a lot of energy and power available to guide and to protect the people who are buried there. But unfortunately people have stopped having processions on burial places, so the, there is no more source of power for whatever spirits there remain to help themselves with or to be helped with. Uh, so yeah, the quality of burial places is unfortunately yeah, quite bad in Western Europe. Um, another factor is the, the safety of the deceased. Um, because the, the process of disintegration of the energy body um, goes in several phases. So the life force takes about three days to completely dissipate and for yeah, the main process of yeah, stopping the identification with the human body it takes a few months. And uh, during this period, the, the spirit has a lot of power, which is unique to uh, a deceased person. And uh, there are unfortunately entities and people who use those energies. Uh, they can be used for healing, but also for enhancing the own energy body. So, for instance, if a person dies with a certain talent, um, it is possible for a necromancer to go to the burial site of this person and appropriate that talent. So make it, take it from the energy body of the deceased and integrate it into their own energy body. And uh, this is the reason why um, graves used to be protected by um, often like uh, uh, iron fences, um, which uh, block a lot of negative entity entities. Uh, and by wakes, by people just staying with the body for the first three days after death and watching over it and uh, chasing away any evil spirits which would come to prey upon the recently departed. Um, there's also certain plants like holly which also have a very um, uh, repellent power towards uh, spirits which prey on the dead. Um, Unfortunately, the, the preying on the dead is yeah, becoming more and more uh, prevalent. Um, and in a way it's of course karma, because we don't take care of our dead, uh, we don't, don't take care of our burial places, we don't prepare ourselves spiritually while we are alive, and it is in a way our, our karma that we suffer for not doing this when we die. Um, I hope that with this video at least a few people will become a little bit more aware and prepare better either personally or um, even better socially as a culture for this inevitable process of uh, transition. Um, working with the dead is not always uh, um, yeah, a negative thing clearly because as I said spirits can be, uh, can be guided, can be helped. Um, the Tibetan Book of the Dead is an interesting example where you actually talk the spirit through various stages um, it, will be, uh, it will be going through after its uh, departure. Um, it's very important actually to talk with the person before they pass on so they will have some um, inkling of what to do or what will happen to them when they do. The, one of the biggest problems is finding the guidance. Um, just as most normal people can't see angels, see spirits or see the deceased, um, when they leave their energy bodies, 
they're still on the very earthbound. They're still bound to their family, their home, uh, their country, their city, uh, their possessions. And because it's a rather low vibration, they still don't have the guidance and protection of the loved ones which passed on before or their guides or angels. And if they don't let go of the family and of their home, uh, they will stay in this rather low earthbound vibration and not having guidance they will just do as yeah what they can and just move around and um, ultimately in the beginning it's not so bad because they can still influence people but the more and more they lose of their energy bodies the more impotent they become and their life can turn into yeah a rather frustrating affair well, not life, but existence can turn into a rather yeah, frustrating affair. Um, channeling is also, for that reason, can be very useful to guide the spirits onward. Uh, there is, however, a risk if you channel the dead very often, because your own energy body will attune to the level of the earthbound spirits. And because this is the energy which is prevalent in you, this is also where your spirit will end up. So the energetic composition of the spirit at the moment of death is very important. This is also why it is very important to give extra care to people who die suddenly or violently or in bad conditions like murder, rape, war. Um, because there are so much heavy energies present in the spirit when it dies that it is very hard for it to receive any guidance and it is much more likely for the spirit to yeah, um, become a wandering spirit on an earthbound level. Um, well, I hope this has um, yeah, been inspirational. It's also not necessary to be afraid of the dead because they have an energy body just like ours, but it's just a lot weaker. They don't have life force, their personality is degraded, their memory is degraded. Um, so we are very much stronger than any spirit is um, and the spirits of the deceased the more recently they are deceased the stronger they are because they still retain some of that power and often if you look at uh, possessions they're often by the recently deceased or by a group of spirits which have to band together to gather enough energy to try to overpower a person um, but you can just um, if you don't go into fear, because fear paralyzes your own energy body and it yeah, removes any, um, any desire for action from you. But if you instead go rather into anger or um, assertiveness and say like, okay, this is my body, this is my property, um, your time is done, leave here, um, you should be able to cast out pretty much most spirits. And it can be a tug of war, so they can try again and again, especially when you're tired or sleeping. Uh, so try to protect the places where you are relaxing or where you are open. And uh, many spirits are earthbound, so they have most power in a certain location. So if you just stay away from that location or change your own location to prevent them from building up a lot of power at the place where you are, it's a very good way to combat like restless restless uh, spirits besides trying to yeah, find guidance for them. Um, another category are the spirits who are not so much lost but afraid to continue on. Um, some people are aware of the heavy karma of the wrong deeds or the lack of spiritual development um, they had and they're afraid that if they move on or move to their next incarnation they will be held accountable for what they did. So um, they're just not ready to move on yet because either of fear of punishment or in a more positive side a desire to atone for the, what they did wrong before moving on into a next incarnation. They feel that their life is unfinished. Um, the spirits who are uh, desirous of this, they sometimes just need experiences or they want to help in a positive side and they will yeah, often become advisors or helpers of, uh, and often try to set right the injustices which they themselves uh, perpetrated. 
and these are called vengeful spirits often because they're in a way um, uh, fighting against the very sins which corrupted them uh, and these can be great helpers um, the others are the spirits who are not so much um, yeah in atonement but more in fear and desiring to escape their, their, their fate and these are often parasitical spirits so um, and they need energies to yeah, maintain their, their physical bodies and they often look out for energies which are very similar to those they had uh, when they were alive so if like sexual energy was a big thing for them or aggression or sadness was a big thing for them they will look for people who have those energies and try to influence them in such a way that they generate these energies so that they can sustain their energy bodies which kind of feed off the similar vibrations so if you notice that you're being pulled towards a certain emotion it's very important not to give in to that but just to have other emotions influencing a living being is quite tiring for a spirit and if they notice that it costs the more energy than they're gaining they will usually move on to the next person um, okay so this was a little mini video on necromancy i hope it's been inspirational god bless you